Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you here in beautiful, beautiful Marrakesh. Maybe you could start just by saying a few words about what it means to you to be invited here and have the opportunity to have this wonderful conversation with the audience um, as one of the events. Well, um, I wanted to come for a very long time. I've heard many things. A lot of colleagues and friends of mine have been here, have done the conversation. And everyone told me about how young a festival it was. I mean, as far as the audience was concerned, of course, because all the authors and directors that are represented here are, um, are first features or second features um, directors. So I think this is always um, youth in our in our art is always something to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. So that really made me want to come for that reason. I also love like like the the idea of something that is. Um, so incredibly international and so uh, um, somehow, yeah, curious. It feels like it's a, it's a curious place to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's why I wanted to, yeah, that's why I wanted to come in the first place, really. I, I really, I really hope that I will have some very, um, let's say, bold questions tomorrow at my conversation. <laughs> um, and of course, I feel like one of my most urgent questions has to be, how did it feel when you won, won that Palme d'Or last year, knowing you were only the second woman to receive it? And for something which I think we can say is not the normal kind of film to be awarded at that festival, certainly not conventional, certainly not conservative. Hmm. Well, I, I surely hope that, it, that the word normal <laughs> will, will not be um, so often used as far as we're talking about films, mm -hmm. especially in the Cannes Festival. I don't think it's a place for normalcy. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> um, it felt, well, obviously it felt like a vertigo, very much. I don't have clear images of it nowadays. I mean, I, I have impressions. I have like strong, like strong rushes of emotions that I distinctly remember, but I, I, I don't remember exactly what happened. It was really, it was so, um, I don't know, like so out of my normal life. I just say the word normal, it was so not normal. It was everything but normal. <laughs> and that's what felt great, actually. And obviously that one thing indeed that I remember being um, hit by is, yeah, the vertigo of history, like really, it felt like there was again something that was abnormal about being a woman on that stage, mm. you know? In the best way possible and in the worst way possible because it makes you feel quite alone. And I thought about Jane Campion who must have felt even more alone than I did. Mm. And I just thought, I hope this is just like history running its course mm. and that it will not be abnormal anymore afterwards. Mm. That, will, that will not be what we talk about. Mm. You know, that is just like a great film has been awarded no matter who did it, mm. you know, if it's a woman and it will, it, be, it will become the new, the new way. As a filmmaker, how do you see that perhaps your approach has the thread to it, going from raw to detain? Um, and, and you know, what does it mean to you to be a storyteller? It's not really something like, it's not like it means something to me, like, it's just I need to do it. I just, I can't really explain why because I've always um, I've always used storytelling in order to exist since I was a child so it's not something that is you know um, a choice it's it's nothing it's not a choice uh, it's never been a choice and it's just like if I don't do it I think it I would yeah I would have harder a hard time coping with life, mm. probably. Um, and there is a release a little bit in it uh, that exists as well in the um, shooting it, because shooting is also a way of keeping on telling that story and going deeper in that story. Mm. Because the camera is uh, a way of telling the story like even more to go deeper because if you put your camera camera here you're not going to say the same thing about the same scene than if you put it here it's not going to mean the same you know so it's always a way to go deeper and deeper and deeper until until 
pretty much it's never over in your head. Like Jim Jarmusch told me yesterday something that I think is incredibly true. He told me like, you never finish a film, you abandon it. But it's true because at one point you don't have any more money and the process is done, but in your head you could keep going on as long as you want, you know? But you have got to abandon it because it's no longer yours. Mm -hmm. And th that's sad, but that, that is, there is also a release in that mm -hmm. as well. And I think it's really true what he said. Yeah. Mm. What about, um, what do you, your thoughts on kind of the use of violence and imagery in films? Um, but I was reading another interview done and saying how interestingly in your film, uh, you know, sometimes things aren't actually explicitly shown, but they're suggested. And sometimes it's the images you prompt in people's minds as much as what you show on the screen. Um, and, and what that can do for that kind of, having people have that visceral reaction to film rather than just being passive, let's say. Well, exactly. I mean, I think you've been pointed it. It's, it's, it's really about implant, uh, like, yeah, implanting things. Um, it's both like, let's say, it's both playing with the way people are going to receive something it's both about like say oh you think that like basically um you think that this is what it is like for example it's in titan in the for, in the the one or when she did afterwards she's dancing and before that uh we are like just you know going through this car show um, with all the hostesses dancing and all that. And you, at the beginning you think that this is the POV. The POV is an objectifying POV. Mm -hmm. And you think it's my POV because I'm making the film, you know. But it's actually me playing with your expectation of what hostesses are supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. So playing basically on your assumptions that are false, you know. It's a bit like the cavern with Pl Plato, and I'm really not comparing myself to that, but it's just like I have a whole, an old history of, of being um, uh, a literary and philosophy student, so it comes back to mind. But, uh, but you see what I mean? It's all about false impressions and false um, supposition about things. And then at one point, just by somehow um, making my character exist more, just by staying with her more, that all of a sudden this, these suppositions, this false assumption that you would make about the hostess somehow reverses itself because now she's the one looking at you, you know, and now you have reversed, reversed the balance of judgment and of power, you know. So I think this is something that in order to get into uh, the skin of people when they watch your film, you really have to get into their mind as well, mm. you know, and play with their assumptions, with what they expect, not only from a scene, not only from a character, but as far as their own humanity are co is concerned, mm. you know. And that's all I'm talking about in my films. It's really just, what is it? What are we, really? Mm. What, is, what is it that to be human? And what is it to, to live in a, in a world where maybe what we see is not what really is, mm. you know? Mm. And you always say that your films come from a very personal place, but you also play a lot with genre. Um, do you know what you're going to do next? Or do you have um, something you really have, like on your bucket list, that you, a person you'd like to work with or a genre you'd like to, to dabble in? Oh, uh, I'm writing my, my next feature right now. Um, I don't really have a bucket list, honestly. I think it's already like so hard <laughs> to get things out and trying to have like a clear idea of what your vision is going to be for that one. That if I would put on top of it like a bucket list of things I have to put in it, I think I would be too overwhelmed and I would just freeze. <laughs> you know? So no, I'm really just I'm I'm just trying to understand what is it that I have to say with the next one, and that's already a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, and really enjoy your time here in Marrakech. Thank you very much. Thank you.